Hey there and welcome back. My name is Thomas and this is for the common. If you're new to the channel, FTC is about arming everyday investors with the tools and information that they need to be successful. I really appreciate you checking out this video and the channel, the views, the likes, the support, it means so much to me. So thank you for being here. And I'm super excited to have you here because we're kicking off a brand new series for the channel called FTC replies. And the goal will be to take frequently asked questions from viewers just like you, and I'll provide my two cents. But importantly, this will not be financial advice because I don't know your full financial picture. And just like we talk about in a lot of our videos, you have to do your own homework as an investor and make your own investment decisions. However, I'm really excited about this series because the goal will be to take a bunch of different topics that we get from investing and finance and I'll be able to chat about them. And hopefully, you'll be able to get some good informational value from my style and you'll see things that you like, that you don't like, and you'll be able to apply those to your own investment style to improve your investing game. And that's what this is all about. So if you have a question that you want me to hit, or if there's a topic that you want me to cover, please, I encourage you to include that in the comment section below, and I will do my absolute best to get to as many of those questions and topics as I can. No promises, but that's my goal. And as well, you could inspire an explanation video just like this one. So I have about four friends in total. Yeah, popular guy. But interestingly, when the market gets wacky like it has over the last couple of months, they all generally text me at the same time about stocks. And that's how I know when things are getting bad. And I was really proud of these friends because yes, there were questions about you know, the war in Ukraine, about inflation and rate hikes, but they were trying to figure out how to put money to work and what stocks they should buy in this market swoon. And good for them. They're going out and doing something that is very difficult to do when there's so much negativity out there and when stocks are ultimately going down. So I was really proud of this group of four friends and it brought together the Question for this first episode of FTC Replies, which is, how do I find a good stock to invest in? And I'm going to give you my shot at that. First and foremost, my friends are asking about individual stocks, and that's important because they already have exposure to ETFs and mutual funds, which are great tools and give my friends broad market exposure in a diversified way, and it usually doesn't cost them too much money. So ETFs and mutual funds can be great tools for investors, but that's not really my cup of tea. See, I love buying individual companies, and that's why my friends came to me with their question. However, you should know it's definitely riskier to buy an individual company than to go out and buy a diversified ETF that say owns a thousand companies. So buying one stock can be riskier than buying a diversified ETF and you need to know that. And my friends know that, but importantly, they still wanted to dig into individual companies, into stocks and try and identify a good one to purchase. And so whenever folks come to me looking for investment ideas, I usually point them to the same place that I go for investment ideas, which is a really great resource on the internet called Finviz. So I'm going to jump to that now. The best way to get there is just to jump to Google and type in Fin, F-I-N-V-I-Z. And Finviz stands for Financial Visualizations. And that's why this website is so amazing is because they have some really great charts and tools to help investors visualize the market. And that's why I always point my friends here. And in this right chart here is called the heat map. It's a really fantastic tool tool and as I click on it, it will show the broader S&P 500 and its scaling companies based on market cap. And I guess I should warn, Finviz does not have the best ads, but 
I don't use an ad blocker because I want to support them with my ad revenue because this website is very helpful to me. So I, I bear through the ads, but certainly do what you want to do. But this heat map again shows companies based on their market cap. And that's so crucial because it will help you as an investor organize your exposure. So for example, I have a friend who back one of my four back in uh, 2015 and 2016 had a purchase plan for Tesla. So every week just purchased a certain amount, I think it was $50 of Tesla stock. And that continued for a couple years. And then he forgot about it. And that was amazing investment strategy because Tesla has increased in so substantially in value. He's done amazingly well. So good for my friend. Uh, not my favorite investment style of forgetting your company, but it's not a bad one. Could have done worse. And Tesla is now 60 or 70% of his portfolio. So if you're looking through this whole mosaic of different companies, you probably shouldn't be buying more Tesla if you're in his position. Or if you have a lot of technology stock, then there are clearly a lot of other areas that you can look for investment ideas that aren't in technology. And that's why I love this tool because it gives you that visualization across all sectors. Another really neat neat feature over here on the left is that you can show this heat map based on a certain period of time. So the last three months have been a pretty challenging environment for stocks and you can see that here. Certain areas of the market have done quite well like energy uh, and some other areas down here in, in certain materials but certain ones have done bad. But certain pockets of the market have done well, but there are a large portion of these names that are in the red, in red by a pretty significant amount. So Microsoft down almost 8%. Adobe down 19. You can go across here to Facebook down 36. That's a big move for Facebook. Netflix down 36. Home Depot, good home improvement story, most likely no, down 15. There's some real pockets of weakness in this market and this tool can give you ultimately a kind of shortcut of the shopping list of seeing what has sold off over the last three months to give you an idea of what might be a good buy now. And as well, you can scale that based on your exposures to say, well, if you've got too, te too much technology, look over here in consumer cyclical. And I'm a real believer in investing in things that you know, and you can always go and learn more about a company, but just looking at this chart, it's not a bad place to start. And my investment style, as I highlight in a couple of videos about the investment strategy of FTC, it's a focus on owning companies for the long term and then seeking three main key characteristics. So those include companies with very compelling futures, companies that are gonna stay in front of competition, and companies that have focused and competent management teams. And when you look across companies like Microsoft off 8%, absolutely a company that is staying in front of competition with Office 365 in their Azure cloud business. How about Google? Really amazing business. We're obviously on you on YouTube and you've got Google search. I mean, Facebook, if you're a fan of Instagram, you know, this would certainly be one that you could take a look at. How about Home Depot? Again, down 15%. That's a pretty substantial move. And Home Depot is a really great consumer business that, again, you know, focused on home improvement. Nike, I mean, the list goes on. And these are businesses that you're going to have heard of. And they're ones that would likely be a decent place to begin looking. I also like to think about investing as a difficulty level. And it might just be the video gamer in me, but I think the analogy still works. And the reason why is because investing by itself is a really difficult game. Stocks go down, you have market volatility. It can be really scary. But the important thing for beginners, in my opinion, is to kind of keep it on normal mode. And that's by investing in companies that you know and what are you know some of the largest boxes here in this heat map chart, like Apple, for example. That's a great company, and that's definitely got more staying power than 
most likely some of these smaller boxes out here because it's Apple. And for me, I think that's a really important message for a beginner is that you don't have to go you know, and really find a hidden company. It can actually be a company that you really know, like Apple, that can be one of your biggest performers. And for example, Apple over the last three years is up around 300%, which for a company like Apple, that's a pretty amazing run when you just could have picked something as simple as Apple. So I encourage people to can invest on normal mode when you're really getting this all figured out. And as well, I encourage you to keep your position sizes moderated. So if you are looking to add money to a stock portfolio, I'd recommend usually starting a position size around two or three percent. And so if you're if you have ten thousand dollars you're looking to allocate, that's two or three percent's a good level, two or three hundred dollars, where you're gonna start to build some exposure in some of these companies that you really admire, but you'll get used to some of the stock market fluctuations and you'll see how that works and hopefully have conviction to hold some of these companies that you know and really love through the market volatility. And I hope to have some future videos that will talk about portfolio construction and, and portfolio kind of position sizing because that's really important. And interestingly, we can go back even farther periods and get a better picture. Again, you'll see Apple's good performance over the last six months, but areas of the market that have done well over the last year, right? It's a very different picture where you have some of these stocks that had been underperforming over the last three months, actually outperforming over the last year. So that might give you some conviction in saying, well, these companies are down on the short term, maybe now's the time to buy them, especially when it's a company like Microsoft, you know, Google, maybe Amazon. I mean, interestingly, right, even still, there are some good opportunities to buy companies that are really solid you know, at a discount and they've underperformed over the last year, let's say like Disney, a really high quality business and down 28% over the last year. Netflix also 28. So that's one of the reasons why I love Finviz is this quick view where you can get some ideas in a visual way of where the pain points in the market, where are some of the underperformers and what might be some companies that you're looking to add to down the road. Another great feature that Finviz has is that you can drill down deeper from this S&P 500 view down to all of the companies that they have in their database. And it looks a bit overwhelming, so bear with me, but this shows every company that's out there with respect to ones that we might be able to invest in. So it shows you the big ones from Microsoft all the way to some very tiny boxes. So this is maybe a more advanced view, but there are absolutely some gem companies in these bigger sectors that you can see in this view that you can't see in the S&P 500 view. However, be aware it does require you to be able to do a little bit more company specific research to determine if it's a company you want to invest in versus Apple where you already have a pretty solid idea of what they do. But it is a, an interesting view to get a picture of areas that are really underperforming and areas that are outperforming. And neat, you know, neat feature is that you can click on any company that you find that you think is interesting and they have a lot of awesome information here and a lot of bad ads. But if you know you pull up Datadog, for example, a company that I own, and you can see recent performance, you can see it over a longer period of time, which has been somewhat painful, but also a lot of really great data. So you can see Datadog is down around 30%. It's got a high gross margin of around you know 77%. That's great. It's a $41 billion market cap. It grew year over year of around you know 83%. That's really phenomenal growth. So it's just an example of, again, a lot of great information here on Finviz despite their bad ads. And then if I exit out of this, the last thing I want to show is, let's say this Home Depot, Home Depot example, and you wanted to maybe buy a consumer discretionary company, you can do a screen in Finviz based on a specific sector. So this is based on consumer cyclical, which aligns pretty decently with consumer discretionary. And if you wanted to try and get some exposure here, I'd recommend uh, organizing this by market cap. 
So you can see what are the largest companies out there and it organizes a lot of information very quickly. So you've got Amazon, Tesla, Home Depot, Nike, you know, Lowe's, Airbnb, Starbucks. These are companies that you're gonna know. And as well, you can organize this based on valuation and get a picture of how expensive are they based on a PE ratio, which we're gonna talk about in a future valuation specific video. But you can see Home Depot at 19 times forward PE, definitely cheaper than Amazon and Tesla. So maybe that's the one that you want. You know, maybe you want something that's a little bit more expensive. So you really believe in Starbucks and you love your morning latte, then maybe that's where you go. But it can give you a picture of some awesome companies and you can compare some fast information like the Home Depot gross margin is 33%. Okay. The Starbucks gross margin, 28%. Interesting. So a home improvement store has a higher gross margin than a coffee restaurant. You know, interesting, but doesn't extend all the way down to the, the profit margin. Either way, both pay a dividend, so maybe that's what you're looking for. And that's the power of FinBiz, is that you can get a lot of great information through this website, and it'll be able to help you make good investment decisions for you. So let's say after a lot of digging around on FinViz and looking at these fun colors, you decided that, hey, you know, PayPal down 40% might be a good opportunity, but given that amount of volatility, maybe that's a hard or a legendary level difficulty company. So you kind of want to stick over to some that you know that aren't down quite as much. And, you know, you've got really interesting red in the consumer cyclical area or consumer discretionary and you think the consumer like yourself is doing pretty well and hey some of these big numbers for nike down 20 percent starbucks down 20 home depot seem pretty interesting and maybe nike is the one that you want to dial in on hey it's a great company awesome brand i think that's a good call well nike if you care to do more company specific research about the company awesome good for you Totally should do it, and I think that's great. In some instances, you could get away with not doing that just because you probably understand the driver behind Nike's business, or let's say Apple, for example, where really what's going to drive them as a company is how many iPhones that they sell and how good the new iPhone is. And you probably may have a good read on that if you're a big Apple fan. So you may not need to dive into a bunch of company specific work, but if you wanted to read more about Nike, and what's going on in that business. A secret is that you can type in any company ticker. So let's say NKE for Nike and IR. So space IR. And that's going to pull up a lot of information on the company from an investment standpoint. And that's because it's taking you to the Nike investor relations page. So if we wanted to do Apple, we can do their ticker AAPL space IR. And that's going to pull up Apple and the first thing should be their investor relations page. And there's going to be a lot of awesome content here. But again, let's go back to Nike and they just reported today. So interesting, um, you know, one to focus on. But if we jump to their site, you'll see they have their earnings release. They've got focus on purpose and sustainability, you know, news events. And the reason why they have all these companies that are publicly traded have these websites is because they want investors to be able to access information and they want to attract new shareholders. And so they do that by providing these investor relations sites. And there's really anything about a company that you might want to learn, you can find through investor relations sites. They're really awesome. So again, if, if you wanted to read about the recent report that came out today about Nike's uh, quarterly results, you can pull it up here. You can look at their direct sales were up 15%. Nice. That's pretty good for the direct consumer business or their, you know, digital sales increased 19. That's great. Or their gross margin increased 100 basis points. That's pretty impressive given all the inflation worry that's out there. So you can read through this and get a really quick picture of, of Nike's business very fast. And that's, that's very helpful. Or if you want to read about the last quarter, they might have you know, a transcript of the earnings call. And every company after quarterly results has a an earnings call where they discuss the results with the broader investment com community. You can listen to those by joining their webcast here, 
or you can read a transcript. A lot of times companies will post them on their website. They tend to be long, so this is extra credit if you decide you wanna do this. Uh, but they're oftentimes on websites or you can search them. So Nike transcript and it'll come up here's motley fool and they have a version of the transcript that you can check out so again the company specific research it's great if you decide it's what you want to do sometimes you can get away with not doing it but i would highly uh, encourage you to check out every company's investor relations page that you plan on investing in so to wrap whenever i have somebody who's asking me how to go find a stock that they should invest in. I almost always point them to Finviz because of that awesome heat map and the visualization they have that shows so much information in a really efficient way where you can see some of the big boxes or areas of the market that you might not have exposure that you want exposure or you might see some names that are underperforming over a certain period of time and you might, might wanna buy on that weakness. So I point people to Finviz and I encourage them to look for some really great companies that they recognize that are underperforming. Or if you see one that's really underperforming and you wanna learn more, I also really encourage people, really regardless, to go to the company's investor relations page by searching the company name and investor relations in Google. Every publicly traded company will have that website. There's a lot of great information there about the company, about the stock which you know, they'll tell you about the earnings, they'll tell you about what's working for the company, what's not, they'll have presentations. It's a really great way to get ramped up on a company. And then for bonus credit, you can look at the last quarter's earnings call, which they can be long, but they outline a really detailed view of the company from management's point of view and can be extremely helpful for you as an investor. And it may even just unlock that last little bit of conviction that you needed to go out and buy the shares of a company that maybe is performing, uh, underperforming for whatever reason. So those are the resources that I would point to. And I hope the video was helpful. If you got any value out of it, I'd really appreciate a like or subscribe to the channel. The support again means so much to me and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for joining for the first FTC replies.